So where were we? We were halfway through Act 3, and uh, Iago was talking to Othello of jealousy. O oh, beware, my lord of jealousy, it is the green-eyed monster that doth mock the meat it feeds on, um, that tortures as it consumes the heart of the jealous person. That cuckold lives in bliss, who certain of his face, fate, loves not his wronger. In other words, knowing it's his fate to be cuckolders, he doesn't love his wife, and who is certain that his wife is faithful when she is not, does not knowingly love the cuckolder. But oh, what damned minutes tell he or, who dotes yet doubts, suspects yet fondly loves. Oh, misery, says Othello. Poor and content is rich and rich enough, but rich as fineless is as poor as winter to him that ever doth ever fears he shall be poor. Good God, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. So, uh, he without money is feels more rich than the man with money who fears he shall lose it. And Othello says, why, why is this? Thinkest thou I'd make a life of jealousy to follow still the changes of the moon with fresh, with fresh suspicions? Constantly renewed? No, to be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such ex-suffligate and blowed surmises matching thy inference. Tis not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the slightest fear without of her revolt, for she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago, I'll see before I doubt, when I doubt, prove. And on the proof there is no bore but this, away at once with love or jealousy. So Othello's hitting back at Iago. You know, saying, you know, he, he needs proof. I am glad of this, for now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife, observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eyes thus, not jealous, nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused uh, to be to be deceived on account of your own goodness. Look to it. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let God see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave it undone but keep unknown. Again, trying to sow the seed of doubt. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father marrying you, and when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. Why go to then? She that so young could give out such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up close as oak, he thought twas witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. And these words are echoed at the end of the scene when Iago says, I am your own forever. I, I just, uh, just thought I'd point that out. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits, not a jot, not a jot. If faith I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. But I do see you're moved. I am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech shall fall into such vile success which my thoughts aim not. Cassio is my worthy friend, my lord, I see you're moved. So don't take him, don't take the worst conclusions from his words. Because um, he's saying that he didn't mean them to, to sound as bad, to sound as bad as Othello is imagining. 
My lord, I see your move. No, not much moved, but I do not think but Desdemona's honest. Long, long live she so, and long live you to think so. And yet how nature, erring from itself. Again, the, again the thought that a Venetian marrying a, a, a Moor um, is against nature, and that somehow the, the Moor is, is quite horrible because of the colour of his skin. So nature erring from itself. Ah, uh, there's the point is to be bold with you not to affect many proposed matches of our own clime and complexion and degree, whereto we see in all things nature tends. Foe, one may smell in such a will most rank, foul disproportions, though unnatural, thoughts unnatural. But pardon me, I do not in position distinctly speak of her, though I may fear her will, recoiling to her better judgment, may fall to match you with her country forms and happily repent. <laughs> So, in other words, when she comes to her senses, um, she'll reject them all and uh, go back to um, Venetian men. The Lord says, Farewell, 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 farewell. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on thy wife to observe. Leave me, Iago. My Lord, I take my leave. Why did I marry? This honest creature doubtless sees and knows more, much more than he unfolds. So, he's saying that Iago no, more, no, sees and knows more than he's letting on. Iago returns, My lord, I would on my entreat your honour to scan this thing no farther. Leave it to time, although tis fit that Cassio have his place. For sure he fills it up with great ability, yet... If you please to hold him off a while, you shall by that perceive him and his, and his means, so to conceal himself and watch um, his discourse with Cassio. Note if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity. Much will be seen in that. In the meantime, let me be thought too busy in my fears. As worthy cause I have to fear I am and hold her free, I do beseech your honour. Fear not my government. I once more take my leave. And then Othello goes on to uh, praise the honesty of Iago. He's really got them duped. It's, it's amazing. This fellow's of exceeding honesty. Talk about rose-coloured glasses. And knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. So if I do prove her wild, happily for I am black and have not these soft parts of conversation that chamberers have, um, Venetian men. He's not well spoken like the Venetian men. Or for I am declining into the veil of years. He's, he's obviously much older than her. Yet that, no, that's not much. She's gone. I am abused and my relief must be to loathe her. O oh, curse of marriage, that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. It's, uh, it's, been, a common, um, it's been a common belief down the ages that uh, um, men could never control the, the appetites of women, that they would cheat on them at any opportunity. Um, and they could never be sure that their kids were, were theirs. Um, and really that's just um, projecting their own selves onto women uh, in order to oppress them. Because <laughs> it's the men that sleep with anything and sire bastards all over the place, but they seem to think that's all right. I had rather be a toad and live upon the vapour of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Yet tis the plague of great ones, prerogative are they less than the base. Tis destiny unshunable like death. Even then this forked plate is fated to us when we do quicken. Desdemona and Amelia comes in, look where she comes. If she be false, then heaven it's, oh then, heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain on my forehead here. Um, from the cuckold's horns, <laughs> is what my notes say in the book. 
Faith, that's with watching or staying awake. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard within this hour. It will be well. Thalia says, your napkin or your handkerchief is too little. And this is the vital part. He puts the napkin away from him and it drops. So this is the, the napkin that Othello prizes so much that he gave to Desdemona, the one that was given to him by his mother, um, who was given it to her by an Egyptian to uh, make sure her marriage was successful. So uh, the handkerchief drops. Let it alone. Come, I'll go in with you. I'm very sorry that you're not well. And uh, then Othello and Desdemona exit, and Amelia takes up the napkin, takes up the handkerchief. I am glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a, hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for he conjured her that she should ever keep it, that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work taken out and give it to Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows, not I. I nothing but to please his fancy. He int she intends nothing but to please his fantasy. Iago comes in. How now? Why do you here alone? Do you not try to have a thing for you? You have a thing for me. It is a common thing. Ha! Huh? To have a foolish wife. Is that all? What will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the moor first gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal. Hast stolen it from her? No, face. She let it drop by negligence. And to the advantage I being here, took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench, give it to me. What will you do with it you, that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Why, what is that to you? And he takes the napkin. If it not be for the purpose of import, give it to me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall lack it. Be not act known on it. So don't acknowledge it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. Now this is uh, the next stage in his plan. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something, the more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons. So dangerous ideas are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste, but with a little act upon the blood burn like the mines of sulphur. So he's going to continue feeding um, Othello's jealousy. Enter Othello. I did say so. Look where he comes. Not Poppy nor Mandragora. Um, Mandragora is a sleep-inducing substance made from the manjate root. Nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owest yesterday. So, not all the sleeping potions in the world will make him sleep well, you know, after what Iago has been feeding him. Ha <laughs> ha, false to me? Why, how now, General, no more of that. Avaunt, be gone. Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear tis better to be much abused than to know it a little. So it is better to be mistreated or believed than to um, than to not than to you know to not know about it. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, fed well, and was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed and not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he's not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body. So I had nothing known. O oh, now forever, farewell the tranquil mood, farewell content. Farewell the plumed troops and the big wars that make ambition virtue. O oh, farewell. Farewell the neighing steed and the shrill trump. The spirit stirring drum, the ear piercing fife. The royal banner and all quality, pride, pomp and circumstance of glorious war. And O oh, you mortal engines, whose rude throats the immortal Jove dread clamours counterfeit. Farewell, Othello's occupation's gone. So, he's saying farewell to the things that made him happy before. 
because uh, he fears that Desdemona is unfaithful. Is it possible, my lord? Villain, be sure thou prove my love or whore. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof, or by the worth of mine internal soul, thou hast better have been born a dog than answer my naked wrath. Is it come to this? Make me to see it, or at least so prove it, that the probation bears no hinge nor loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. So you've got to prove it, Iago, or you're dead meat. My noble lord, if thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep, all earth amazed. For nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than that. So he's going to make his life a living hell. O oh, grace, O oh, heaven, forgive me, are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? Good by, God by you. Take mine office. O oh, wretched fool, thou loves to make thine honesty a vice. O oh, monstrous world, take note, take note, O oh, world, to be direct and honest is not safe. So he's backpedalling here. I thank you for this prophet, and from hence I'll love no friends, since love breeds such offence. Nay, stay, thou shouldst be honest. I shall be wise, for honesty's a fool and loses that it works for. It's like the um, the age old, uh, you know, your friend's boyfriend's cheating on her to your teller, and uh, she'd rather not know about it, because if you do, you you lose the friendship. Uh, you, you might you're likely to lose her friendship, and that's the same thing here. By the world, I think my wife be honest and think she is not. I think that thou art just and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. My name that was as fresh as Dion's, uh, Diana, the goddess of chastity, Dion's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. If there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. Would I were satisfied. Yago, I see, sir, you are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You will be satisfied? Would, nay, and I will. And may, but how? How satisfied, my lord? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on, behold her toppled? Death and damnation, oh. It was a tedious, tedious difficulty, I think, to have to bring them to that prospect. Damn them, then, if ever mortal eyes do see them bolster more than to their own. Bolster means to share a pillow. What then? How then? What shall I say? Where's satisfaction? It is impossible you, shall see, you should see this. Were they as prime as goats, uh, as lustful as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and fools as gross as ignorant made drunk? But yet I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you might have it. So... He's going to show. He's going to show Othello that uh, Desdemona is being unfaithful. Now that he's got the handkerchief, give me a living reason she's disloyal. Iago says, "I do not like the office, but sith I am entered into this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep." There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In his sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he grip and wring my hand, cry, O oh, sweet creature, then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, lay his leg o'er my thigh, and sigh and kiss, and then cry, Cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. O oh, monstrous, monstrous, nay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. This is a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. So that uh, the proof of this dream will validate um, other proofs, however flimsy they may be. I'll tear her all to pieces, nay, yet be wise, yet we shall see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? 
I gave her such a one, it was my first gift. I now I I know not that, but such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was her wife's, did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with beard with, if it be that. If it be that or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh that the slave had forty thousand lives, one is too poor, too weak for my revenge, now do I see tis true. Look here, Iago, all my fond love thus do I blow to heaven, tis gone towards Desdemona. Yield up, O oh love, thy crown and heart and throne to tyrannous hate. Swell bosom with thy freight, for tis of aspic's tongues. Aspic is, uh, is a kind of poisonous snake. It's the one used to, um, that Cleopatra used to kill herself. Yet be content, O oh blood, blood, blood. Patience, I say, your mind may change. Never, Iago, like to the Pontic Sea, the Black Sea, whose icy current and compulsive course ne'er knows retiring ebb but keeps you on to the Propontic and the Hellespont. Even so, my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love. He's comparing his anger to um, the icy black sea, till that a capable and wide revenge swallowed them up. He kneels before Iago and says, Now by yon marble heaven, in the due reverence of a sacred vow, I here engage my words. Do not rise yet, then Iago kneels. Witness you ever-burning lights above, the stars. You elements that clip us round about, witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his writ hand's heart to the to wronged Othello's service. Let him command and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever! Thello says, I greet thy love, now with, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within these three days, do, let me hear thee say that Cassio is not alive. My friend is dead, tis done at your request, but let her live. Damn her, lewd minx, so oh, damn her, damn her. Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant, I am your own forever. So that's uh, Act 3, Scene 3. Um, Iago's plan is working absolutely beautifully. Um, the Moor is now in a, a jealous rage um, to the point of homicide. And uh, please join me for Act 3, Scene 4.